Hector hurriedly returned to the city of Troy in pursuit of his brother Paris, who was nowhere to be found on the battlefield. The chief of the Trojan hosts stormed into Paris's palace and spotted him sulking in his room, while Helen looked disgruntled at the way he was behaving. Hector yelled at his brother, telling him how shameful it was that he remained apathetic in his palace, while his brothers and countrymen were shedding their blood in a war that he had ignited. It was Paris's duty to put on his armor and stand in the front line. Helen lamented that she was the cause of such tragedy. If only she had been united with a brave man, her fate and disgrace would have been more bearable. While looking for his wife to say goodbye before heading back to combat, Hector was mobbed by the wives of the warriors who fought by his side. They anxiously asked him about the state of their husbands. The prince understood the dire situation that the wives were in, but had no way of answering so many questions. Finally, Hector met with his wife Andromache, who was joined by a servant girl bearing their son and heir, Astyanax, on her lap. His wife emotionally embraced him, saying that one day his courage would be the reason for his death. She begged him not to expose himself to danger, because he was all she had left, considering that Achilles had killed her parents and brothers. But Hector said how much of a coward he would be if he sent his men to their deaths while he was completely safe. He knew that Thanatos was always around, but he didn't fear death. His only fear was that after his fall, his wife would be enslaved and the captor would display her as a trophy, saying that she was Prince Hector's wife. Hector stretched out his arms to take his son, but the child was frightened by his father's imposing helmet. The prince laughed, took off his headgear and said goodbye to his wife and son. He was ready to take on the bravest of Greeks. Returning to the battlefield, Hector took the lead of his men and hollered loudly for all the Greeks to hear that he was there to challenge any Greek warrior brave enough to face him in single combat. Even though Menelaus was wounded, he tried to come forward, but was restrained by his brother Agamemnon. He said that it was foolish to defy such a man in his condition, and simply lust for death. By now the Greeks' bravery seemed to wane, and they looked at each other hoping that some countrymen would volunteer to confront the great Trojan hero but no one came forward for the duel. Old Nestor, king of Phylos, who many decades ago had been a great warrior, but whose strength and agility had been eaten away by time, said that if he were not so old, Hector would have already found his adversary. Nestor's address roused the spirits of several Achaeans who volunteered for the duel. Among them were Odysseus, Agamemnon, Diomedes, and the great Ajax. There was a draw among the volunteers, so that the gods could decide who would be the warrior to take on the Trojan champion. The great Ajax was the one chosen by the gods to face the one that many believed could only be matched by the mighty Achilles. But Ajax of Salamis was a true force of nature. No man among the Greeks could equal him in size, and with his gigantic shield, which no other man was able to carry, he came face to face with Hector. Hector's spears were not able to pierce Ajax's unbreakable shield. Meanwhile, the spears thrown by the giant pierced Hector's shield and almost took his life. The two heroes struggled with tremendous bravado until the sun dropped behind the mountains, preventing any indication of who was winning. The fight was stopped by the referees of both sides and a draw was declared. Hector and Ajax greeted and praised each other for their performance. They traded gifts. They had started the fight as enemies, but eventually finished as great friends. An armistice was enacted and hostilities between Greeks and Trojans ceased for a time. The bodies of the fallen fighters were collected by their colleagues and families, whereupon they could receive the rightful funerary honors. <laughs>